Because that's exactly what happened in State House on Saturday morning. And it's exactly what was followed by a statement which was issued by Kenya Kwanza. So we are standing here before you uh, very concerned that uh, the, the country or the leadership which is currently in place can take such a direction. But let me say this, first and foremost, that we are here to confirm that the peaceful protests are planned for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week are on, as earlier declared by our leaders. These protests will go on in line with Article 37 of our Constitution, which, you, as you all know, provides for freedom of peaceful assembly and picketing. And no person, no authority, has got the power to suspend the operation of Article 37 of our Constitution. No person, no authority, no agency, not William Ruto, not Kituri Kindiki, not Kinditu Gachagua, Gachagua who? Yes. No person and anybody purporting to stop demonstrations is deluding themselves because they have got no that power or authority. Now we can also confirm that the signature collection is also going on and will proceed side by side with the protests. This exercise is also protected under Article 1 of our Constitution. The people have decided to act directly. And who are we to go against the wishes of the people? And having said this, we wish to set the record straight on a couple of things that Kenya Kwanza got wrong last week in their response to the ongoing protests. Now, Kenya Kwanza claimed that protesters are being paid. Now, for anyone to claim that those protesters who came out in hundreds and thousands in places like Emali, Busia, Kitale, Kilifi, Kakamega, Machakos, and Nairobi, among other places, were paid is to be extremely insincere and to live in deep denial. And that should worry Kenyans. A regime in denial and deep slumber is a very dangerous regime. And Kenya Kwanza in one, is one such regime, as we all know by now. Now, we are shocked at how fast Kenya Kwanza has lost contact with the people and how they don't understand what Kenyans are going through. Kenya Kwanza claims that the protests are not about the cost of living. In their view, the cost of living is not so high as to warrant protests. That is how a regime that has abandoned people's agenda thinks. And Kenya Kwanza is obviously one such regime. Because Kenya Kwanza does not seem to understand or know how hungry and angry Kenyans are. And like a broken record, Kenya Kwanza is stuck. Still talking about the handshake of 2018, the Nusumukate of 2008, and so on and so forth. Kenyans are past that stage. And, and since they lack imagination, Kenya Kwanza is the only political formation still thinking and talking about the handshakes and the rest. And no wonder the regime has lost the people. Now Kenya Kwanza is accusing us, as a mule, of failing to provide solutions to the rising cost of living. Seriously. We know no country where a party stays in government, but once the one out of government provides solutions to the problems of the people. If Kenya Kwanza solutions are not working for the people, then Kenya Kwanza needs to get out of power. Just disband and quit. Across the world, 
Responsible leaders and regimes admit failure of their policies and quit in the interest of the nation. Don't ask us for, sol for solutions. Quit and pave way for a regime that has solutions. Indeed, if we took our power, we would provide those solutions. You all know. Now, in their address last weekend, Kenya Kwanzaa purported to call the attention of the nation to so-called efforts by the government to reduce the cost of living. But they could not point to any such efforts. If there's an effort to lower the cost of living, Kenya Kwanzaa will... Kenyans will notice it. And Kenya Kwanzaa would not need to be explaining itself or struggling to, be, to explain itself. The truth is, there are no such efforts to lower the cost of living. How can raising of taxes on fuel from 8 to 16 percent be classified as an effort to lower the cost of living? Now, Kenya Kwanzaa is telling us that the government has hired some 55,000 teachers. Now, so what? That isn't a favor. They are supposed to be hiring teachers anyway. But they are missing the point. People eat food. And people want food. Even the teachers they are crying about. Even the teachers are crying about the cost of living. And high taxes. And low salaries. Hiring teachers doesn't reduce the cost of living. What is the point in hiring a teacher, then taking away his entire salary through taxes? What is the point in hiring workers and turning them into slaves? We encourage Kenya Kwanzaa to move past generalities of constantly reminding Kenyans that Kenya Kwanzaa is a legitimately elected government. People want food. People don't eat government. Legitimate or illegitimate. Yeah. Give them food. And they leave the streets. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The legitimacy or credibility of any government is seen in the way it governs and it treats people. If a regime is a failure, like Kenya Kwanzaa is, it does not matter how legitimate or otherwise it is. Because people simply want food. Now, Kenya Kwanza is talking about uh, the Hustler Fund and the plan to roll out the next phase and so on and so forth. Now, Kenya has never had a, sh a shortage of funds, <laughs> like uh, Youth Fund, Women Fund, and you can count, count them. And yet again, people don't eat funds, you know. People eat food. And people don't eat in faces. Yes, people eat today. Okay? And every day. So don't tell Kenyans about Hustler Fund at its next phase. Just tell Kenyans how food will be affordable now. Today. And they will leave the streets. Otherwise, if you don't do that, get, be ready to face these people in the streets for as long as it will take. Hire your militia as many as you want to hire, but the people will not leave the streets. Namna you? Yes. So I think I want to leave it at that point and ask my brother, the Honorable 